day everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Richard Fulmer here and welcome to another Richard's Rock Rambles. So we're carrying on looking at our concept albums. And today we'll be checking out two bands from opposite ends, different sides of the pond. Looking at one band who sadly are no longer around and another band which is very much a still a going concern. So that's the band we're going to start off with first. The Drive-By Truckers and the album Southern Rock Opera. Really cool album. I just love these album covers. They've all mostly done, or pretty much all of their album covers were done by a guy by the name of um, Wes Freed, who sadly passed away last year. Not quite sure what the issue was there. Yeah, but he did pretty much all their albums up until the last three, I think, that's been done by somebody else. So this, for me, is their standout album. This is about their third or fourth album, I think. And, uh, yeah, very much from where they come, uh, southern parts of the States. And uh, well, let me tell you what the concept is. So pretty much a semi-autobiographical uh, screenplay about growing up in the South and about the Leonard Skinner plane crash. Now, these guys, are one of their big influences is Leonard Skinner. And they're pretty much telling their story in their own way of the plane crash and what happened in this album, as well as it being about the South and about them growing up. Uh, it's in two acts, so this is a double disc. Let's see, there, there's Act 1 and there's Act 2. There's a lovely picture of an owl. Um, I'll just take out the album cover and show you what's there. There's another cool drawing of the of the car crash one of the songs in here is about a car crash and uh yeah there's a picture of the band and i think that's jason isbell i'm not because he doesn't get listed in this album as being part of the band although he was for many years I'm not sure if that is him or if that's one of the other guys it might be um mike cooley or patterson hood so you get all the the lyrics which tells you the whole story so you can follow it quite well. Let's see if there's anything else I can show you. Uh, it's just a few more drawings. Uh, really interesting album. Some incredible guitar work here. What I like about this band is that they normally have about three guitarists. So you've got one who does slide, one who does lead breaks, and the other one keeps up the rhythm. Um, there's a shot of the band. This was a slightly different lineup, um, I think. Because there used to be, uh, he has that drawing there. I love his stuff. Sadly, he's passed away. There's another one. So, who's in the band? Mike Cooley on guitar and vocals. Tall, lanky guy. Plays a lot of the slide and acoustic work um, on the album. Patterson Hood on guitar and vocals. He's the main songwriter within uh, Drive By Truckers. Still in the band. Uh... Rob Malone on guitar and vocals, so he's the third guitarist, and Brad Morgan on drums. I'm not too sure who um, is doing the bass work here. I think it's probably Patterson Hood, although they don't specify on the album. So what are the tracks on here? Days of Graduation, Ronnie and Neil, so that's Ronnie Van Zant from uh, uh, Leonard Skinner. And Neil being Neil Young, and of course you know the history between Ronnie Van Zant and Neil Young. They each had a go at each other in different songs. Uh, they worked things out after a while, but so yeah, that's pretty much about them. 72, This Highway's Mean, that's the one where I showed you the car crash. A uh, really interesting track that. Dead, Drunk and Naked. Guitar Man Upstairs, Birmingham. The Southern Thing, that's another one about the South. And uh, these guys are very proud of where they come from. And, you know, they, they're totally anti the whole Confederate flag, or, you know, the racism thing and all the rest of it of the South. They're very much anti that. Um, and they've picked up a bit of flack over the years for being quite controversial, especially Patterson Hood. Um, the three great Alabama icons, Wallace, Zip City and Move. So that's all on Act 1. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. It's about eight or nine tracks. Then you get uh, Act 2, Let There Be Rock. Yes, the ACDC cover. They do that very well. Uh, Road Cases, Woman Without Whiskey, Plastic Flowers on the Highway. Cassie's Brother. 
Now, Cassie Gaines was one of the people who died in that Leonard Skinner, uh, Leonard Skinner plane crash, along with her brother, Chris Gaines, the guitarist, and uh, Ronnie Van Zandt, the, the lead singer. So that's a song about that. Life in the Factory, Shut Up and Get on the Plane. Because the, the, and Leonard Skinner didn't, weren't, weren't too sure about this plane because it hadn't been serviced or something, and the pilots were a bit dodgy, but they got on, and of course, the rest is history. Greenville to Baton Rouge, and the last track, Angels and Fuselage. Uh, Fuselage. Excellent album. Um, like I said, they can get heavy in spots. They're more of a southern rock thing, a lot of country rock as well. But if you're into that kind of thing, Drive By Truckers is definitely a band to check out. Like I said, they've got a pretty large discography. I think there must be 11, 12 albums by now. A couple of live ones as well, and there's DVDs to look at as well. But this concept album is incredible. I just love the guitar interplay between Mike Cooley and Patterson Hood. Patterson Hood's got a particular way of singing, very much of the Southern style. Um, great rhythm section on here as well, and the storytelling is amazing. There we go, Drive By Truckers, the Southern Rock Opera, the first one we're checking out. So I said the one album is uh, one that you should know. Uh, this was a massive album for the band. A lot of controversy as well. Within their ranks, they have probably one of the most controversial men in, in rock. Yes, I'm talking about this band, Pink Floyd and The Wall. Now, I've got to say up front here, I don't often reach for this album, and I'll tell you why. It's not an easy listen. It's it's dark. It's it's very depressing. It's not a happy album. You're not going to use this at somebody's 21st or their bar mitzvahs uh, or at your next uh, braai or barbecue. You're not going to put this music on. This is stuff for headphones and losing yourself in the story. Um, released in 1979. Oh, by the way, the Drive by Truckers was released in 2001. So that goes back away. 1979, this was released, uh, produced by Roger Waters, David Gilmore, and Bob Ezrin. Of course, Roger Waters recently in the news has been having a go at Bob Ezrin about this album and some of the stuff he did. And, uh, and James Guthrie, he was the other guy who was uh, part of the production team for this album. So the concept is pretty much, uh, very much about Roger Waters. And it deals with a gentleman, it's a sort of a rock opera that explores abandonment and isolation issues and also the main character is a guy by the name of Pink, Pink Floyd Pink and in the movie very well played by Bob Geldof from the Boontown Rats. So it's pretty much about uh, the rock life and uh, and all the rest of it and uh, the isolation symbolized by a wall which it, as you know in the movie then they build a wall about the band and that was Roger Waters. He became so disillusioned with crowds in the in the late 70s that he said he felt like there was this wall between the band and the crowds and uh, that's so that's part of the story i mean there are other parts to it as well that you can make up your own mind about um like i said the central figure is pink uh pretty much based on roger waters as well as sid barrett the original guitarist and vocalist for pink floyd really troubled soul as well so this is a double disc. This has been given many deluxe issues. In fact, the most recent was in 2016. There's a 2012 reissue which had a deluxe immersion version of seven discs. Yeah, get your head around that. And I've seen some of the prices for those, especially as far as vinyl goes. <laughs> I would have to mortgage the house. I would have to sell, I don't know, so many things here just to get that. In South Africa, here with the exchange rate getting imported stuff is just beyond most people's means. It's really expensive. Would love to have it though. And the cover is by Gerald Scoff, who did a lot of the work inside. Just show you. Excuse me, it's really hot here today. Written by Roger Waters, so he wrote most of the story. Um, there's some of the artwork. Gerald Scarf's artwork, you guys might recognize some of those. And there's the lyrics. Not the best writing in the world, not easy to read. Um, here we go. Let's see if there's anything else I can show you here. As I said, this isn't, there's another one. That's the judge, I think, and towards the end of the, of the album. This isn't the best deluxe version. 
but it'll do me. Like I said, I don't often reach for this, so I don't think I'm going to be shelling out money for it anytime soon. So, the all important tracks. Track one, In the Flesh, um, which is yeah, a great beginning to an album. You can hear straight away, this is not a happy album. The Thin Ice, Another Brick in the Wall, Part 1, The Happiest Days of Our Lives. Another Brick in the Wall, Part 2, which was a massive hit for them, even in the discos. Believe it or not, Pink Floyd did well in the discos. Uh, a very melancholy track called Mother. Goodbye, Blue Sky, with some beautiful lyrics, um, a beautiful vocal from uh, David Gilmour. He really sang well on this album, as well as some of David Gilmour's best guitar work you'll find on this album. Empty Spaces. Young Lust, which is quite a heavy rocker. That's probably my favorite track on the album. Uh, one of my turns coming on, that's about drugs and Pink doing his thing. Uh, Don't Leave Me Now, Another Brick in the Wall, and Goodbye, Cruel World. So that's the end of part one. Then you get to part two. Hey You, Is There Anybody Out There? Uh, that track. Nobody Home. Vera, that being Vera Lynn, of course, she was a big part of the Second World War, which a lot of this movie is based around. Roger lost his dad in the Second World War, and he was still very young. Uh, Bring the Boys Back Home, Comfortably Numb, which has got stunning guitar work. I was lucky enough to catch Roger Waters when he came to South Africa, and he played at uh, uh, the Velodrome, and uh, yeah, the guitar work that evening was amazing. Uh, the show must go on in the flesh. Run Like Hell, another great track. Uh, Waiting for the Worms, Stop, The Trial, and Outside the Wall. This you've got to listen to from the beginning to the end because it does tell a story. Like I said, a large part of it you've got to make up your own mind about. But it's really worth a, a, a listen. And it's an essential if you're a Pink Floyd collector. Uh, my favorite is probably uh, Animals, the album before this one. But yeah, like I said, when I do reach for it, you have to listen to it from start to finish. And just quickly before I sign off here and say goodbye, of course, there's the movie version as well. I remember going to watch this at the midnight shows here at the Three Arts Theatre, which is no longer around here in Cape Town. Really big sound system. And this was quite amazing. There's the back. I'm not going to go into too much detail about that. I thought I'd just mention that. There we go, guys. Another two... Uh, Concept albums, one which is an essential and another one which is worth checking out, the drive-by truckers. Have yourselves a great week. Take it easy. As I said, a lovely day here. And uh, yeah, I will catch you soon. Bye-bye.